Welcome to the show, folks. Today we're diving headfirst into the often overlooked world of hydraulic structures. You know, those unsung heroes of water management that keep things flowing smoothly. We're talking dams, weirs, canals, the whole nine yards. We're about to get our hands dirty with the nuts and bolts of how we control one of our most precious resources, water. From ancient aqueducts to modern mega dams, we'll uncover the secrets behind these marvels of engineering. So buckle up, grab your hard hat, and get ready for a crash course in hydraulic structures. I guarantee you'll never look at a canal or a culvert the same way again. All right, let's start with the head regulator. Think of this structure as the bouncer at a canal party. It stands at the entrance, deciding how much water gets in and how much stays out. It's like a big valve controlling the flow from the main water source, whether that's a river, reservoir, or another canal. Too much pressure, right? That's where the head regulator comes in, ensuring a steady, manageable flow downstream. It's crucial for irrigation, navigation, and making sure everyone gets their fair share of the water supply. These head regulators can be pretty sophisticated with adjustable gates and mechanisms to fine-tune the flow. They're built tough too, often using concrete and steel to withstand the constant pressure and force of the water. Trust me, you don't want one of these things failing on you. So next time you see a head regulator, take a second to appreciate the crucial role it plays in keeping our water systems in check. Now, let's talk about the cross-regulator, another key player in the canal system. Briefly, we can say the cross-regulator is head regulator cousin. It has the same looking structure. Maintaining a consistent water level across change in water levels is no easy feat. That's where the cross-regulator steps in, like a skilled tightrope walker maintaining balance. Built across the canal, it acts as a speed bump, slowing down or speeding up the flow to keep things level. This ensures water reaches its destination without overflowing in some areas and running dry in others. Cross regulators are especially important in irrigation system. They are used to raise upstream water level to ensure water entering to the upstream branches. These structures often use gates that can be raised or lowered to adjust the water level upstream and flow quantities downstream. So while they might seem simple at first glance, Cross-regulators are essential for maintaining the delicate balance in our water management systems. Ever wondered how boats navigate waterways with varying elevations? I'm not talking about little rapids here, but significant changes in water level. That's where locks come in. These ingenious structures are like water elevators for boats. Imagine a canal or river as a giant staircase with each step representing a different water level. Locks act as the individual steps, allowing boats to climb or descend between these levels. How does it work? Well, a lock is essentially a chamber with gates at both ends. A boat enters the chamber and the gates are closed behind it, sealing it off from the rest of the waterway. Then, depending on whether the boat is going up or down, water is either pumped into or drained out of the chamber. This raises or lowers the boat to match the water level on the other side of the gate. Once the water levels are equal, the gate ahead of the boat opens, allowing it to continue its journey. They are always located beside regulators to ensure canal navigation. Now, let's talk about a hydraulic structure you might encounter every day without even realising it. The culvert, these unsung heroes, work tirelessly beneath our roads and railways, ensuring water flows freely and doesn't turn our commutes into wading expeditions. Essentially, a culvert is a tunnel that allows water to pass under a road, railway embankment or any other obstacle that might get in its way. Think of it as a bypass for water, preventing it from pooling up and causing flooding or erosion. Culverts come in all shapes and sizes, from small concrete pipes to massive arches. The size and design depend on the amount of water they need to handle and the type of traffic passing overhead. Without culverts, our landscapes would be dotted with mini lakes every time it rained. All right, get ready for this one because we're about to talk about siphons, the water benders of the hydraulic structure world. These ingenious contraptions move water uphill without the need for any pumps or external energy sources. Sounds impossible? It's not, and it all comes down to the magic of pressure. Imagine a hose filled with water with one end submerged in a higher container and the other end hanging lower. Once the water starts flowing down the lower end, it creates a vacuum that pulls more water through the hose, even uphill. That's essentially how a siphon works. 
Siphons are particularly useful in drainage systems like those found under canals. They can safely transfer water from one side of the canal to the other without the need for pumps, which can be expensive and energy intensive. Let's take a trip back in time and talk about aqueducts, the granddaddies of water transportation. These ancient marvels of engineering were the lifeblood of many civilizations, carrying water for miles across valleys, rivers and challenging terrain. Imagine trying to move vast quantities of water without modern pumps, pipes or heavy machinery. That was the challenge faced by ancient engineers, and they rose to the occasion with the aqueduct. These structures were essentially elevated canals, often built with stone arches or earth embankments to support the waterway. They used gravity to transport water from its source, typically a mountain spring or river, to its destination, usually a city or agricultural area. The Romans were master aqueduct builders, constructing extensive networks that supplied their cities with water for drinking, bathing and irrigation. Chapter 7 Weirs, the Flow Tamers. Now, let's wade into the world of weirs, those humble yet essential structures that keep our rivers and streams in check. A weir is essentially a barrier built across a waterway, like a low-lying dam designed to control the flow of water. Think of a weir as a notch in a bathtub, regulating the water level while allowing some to spill over. They come in all shapes and sizes, from simple concrete structures to more elaborate designs with adjustable gates. Weirs serve a variety of purposes, including raising upstream water levels for irrigation, diverting water for power generation, and even measuring the flow rate of a river or stream. Weirs might not be the most glamorous of hydraulic structures, but they play a vital role in water management. Chapter 8, Dams Holding Back the Tide. All right, let's talk about the heavyweights of the water management world. Dams, these colossal structures, are the ultimate expression of our desire to control and harness the immense power of water. Dams are built across rivers or valleys to create reservoirs, essentially artificial lakes that store vast quantities of water. This stored water can then be used for a variety of purposes, including irrigation, drinking water supply, hydroelectric power generation and flood control. Building a dam is a massive undertaking, often requiring years of planning and construction. Dams have played a crucial role in human development, allowing us to irrigate vast areas of land, provide reliable water supplies to cities, and generate clean energy. Chapter 9. Tail Escape. Getting rid of extra canal water. We've talked about controlling water flow, but what happens when there's too much of a good thing? That's where the tail escape comes in, acting as the pressure relief valve for our canal systems. Imagine a canal carrying water over a long distance. During periods of heavy rain or snow melt, the water level in the canal can rise rapidly, putting stress on the banks and structures. It's a channel or structure located at the downstream end of the canal, designed to safely discharge excess water into a natural water body like a river or stream. Think of it as an overflow valve preventing the canal from overtopping and causing flooding or damage to the surrounding area. Tail escapes are often equipped with gates or weirs to regulate the amount of water being discharged. This allows for controlled release, ensuring the downstream environment isn't overwhelmed by a sudden surge of water. Outro the flow goes on. So, there you have it, a crash course in the world of hydraulic structures. These structures are more than just concrete, steel and earth. They represent our ongoing quest to manage and harness one of Earth's most precious resources, water. They're a testament to human ingenuity, reminding us that even the most challenging tasks can be tackled with creativity, determination and a healthy dose of engineering know-how. Next time you see a canal, a dam or even a simple culvert, Take a moment to think about the vital role these structures play in our lives. They're the unsung heroes of our water management systems, working tirelessly behind the scenes to keep our communities thriving. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more insights into water management systems.